currency right now. 1971, the United States led the way. By 1973, all the currencies were floating. In other words, all the currencies were previously tied to gold. Now none of the currencies are tied to gold. All the currencies are floating. But some countries do a better job of managing their floating currency than others. Canada does a pretty good job. The Norwegians do a pretty good job. The Australians do a pretty good job. Um, what do you mean by the managing? Swiss. They don't have that much budget deficit, or right. The other, the other part of this problem, which we haven't really even talked about, you might wonder why is the world letting us get away with this? Right? Why? How come? How come the the whole kind of house of cards hasn't already collapsed? The reason is because the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency. Right, which means that central bankers and private institutions around the world hold their or hold their assets in dollar-denominated assets. Right? The reason they did that is because historically, from 1945 to 1971, actually 1944 to 1971, we were on the gold standard, and so people knew, hey, we can we can we're willing to accept these dollars. Right? We don't need to. Um, to have gold, we can accept these dollars because they're 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 backed by gold. In 1971, that system fell apart when Nixon took us off the gold standard. Actually, the Federal Reserve was printing all throughout the 50s and 60s, and it was really the French government in the late 1960s that effectively broke the uh, the U.S. dollar off the gold standard because De Gaulle, who was the the um, the leader of France at the time, De Gaulle said, "Hey, you guys are printing money." I'm not going to hold these dollars anymore. I want gold. So he literally had his treasury secretary show up in Washington with big bags of, not literally, but effectively wanting to trade in his dollars for gold. And they were depleting the, the coverage of the US dollar in terms of what it had as far as gold. Um, they were depleting the, the gold reserves of the country because they were just printing up lots of extra money. So what do you see happening if the house of cards does fall. Like, say we had a situation like Greece, mm -hmm. and our debtor status was lowered, like China was talking about yep. possibly doing. The ratings agencies have already um, put us on watch for that. So, what would you think would happen if that happened? Uh, real interest rates will go up because foreign economies. Remember, we're not just funding our debt internally, right? It's not just U.S. citizens. That was the argument back in the early '80s. When Reagan first started running these deficits, um, they were funded more than 90% by U.S. investors, right? So it was not an issue. Now we have foreigners who are funding our debt. Um, realistically, you're probably going to have skyrocketing interest rates as you have in Germany, or excuse me, in uh, in Greece. I think their their two year went up to literally like 10%. Their five year, all the all their interest rates went up above 10%. So you have skyrocketing interest rates because as a lender, think about it, if you're, if you're a lender to Greece or to the United States and you're worried that that country is going to default, you're going to have to, you're going to insist on higher interest to compensate you for the extra risk that you're taking by holding the debt. What do you think would be the ramifications since we are several hundred times larger of an economy and have a lot larger global influence than opposed to Greece that is worth? That is the, that is the... $64 trillion question. No one knows. Look, there are, two, there are only two ways out of this. Either we inflate, right, which means we print off a bunch of extra money and we raise prices for everything through the roof. But look at, look at uh, does anybody have housing like in California, like any, anybody um, whose parents or grandparents owned housing in California in the 1970s? Yeah, yeah you did, okay. So, inflation, the, the the way that inflation will wipe out debt is, let's say back in the 70s, that one of those condos in Santa Monica probably only costs, you know, maybe $50,000, maybe 100000 at the most. So if you think about it, let's just say it costs $50,000, yeah. What's that? One minute. One minute, okay. Let's say you had um, a house that was $50,000. You put down 20%, which was 10000 and you had a loan for $40,000. And now, all of a sudden, 20 years later, your house is worth 550000 
Well, guess what? You still only have a loan of $40,000. So one way to reduce the real consequence of debt is through inflation. That's one of our options. The other option is default. Either way, I think it's going to be very disruptive to the global economy. I think it's going to be very disruptive to the Europeans. I think it's going to be very disruptive to the Chinese. Most of all, it's going to be disruptive to the United States. We're, we're going to go through a very difficult recession. People may call it a Great Depression. I don't know what they're going to call it, but it's going to be, it's going to be bad. The reason I came here today was not to tell you about the bad stuff, but to tell you about the good stuff, which is that if you believe in limited government, we can rebuild this country. And that's what I'm waiting for. Thank you so much. Thank you.